All right, what's poppin', people? We're back. And as of last night, I believe it was, when this thread went up, Rotom Mo is finally being suspected in Inu. I would say this is a Pokemon that's been getting a lot of buzz, a lot of clamoring for a test for, frankly, months, even before the Dragalge test. But there was always a level of hesitance to doing it for a couple of reasons. One, Rotom Mo has always been viewed as a really good glue Pokemon. You think like Bronzong, back when in you had that, near the end of last year, Bronzong was still viewed as a super centralizing Pokemon, but not in necessarily the unhealthy way where you have to like go out of your way to build a team that is good for Bronzong. And at the end of the day, you know, people view viewing the bads more than the goods. That wasn't really the case there. And that's kind of the same with Rotom Mo. I think people have long viewed the goods as outweighing the bads. You know, maybe let's compare it to Dragalge too, right? Dragalge is a Pokemon where I think it offered a lot to the tier in terms of Pokemon that it could soft check and just the amount of rolls that it could put into one Pokemon. But the negatives there outweighed the positives. But we finally arrived at the Rotom Mo test because people have felt for a while and it started with the Dragalge test that there was something wrong with the metagame. And we got a lot of posts like that in the last NP thread, as you saw people saying, yeah, Dragalge's probably broken, but we don't, you know, we don't think this actually addresses the issues with the format. This is a Pokemon that, yeah, we should get rid of because it'll still help, but there's underlying problems, and we've always linked those underlying problems to the heavy, heavy, heavy Volt Turn meta that Inu is in, where if let's, let's just look at the Pokemon we got. I'll look. I'll even do it through this team. Let's look at all the common Pokemon that Inu has that pivot. And we're, I'm only going to keep it to like good Pokemon. And by good, I mean Pokemon I feel like referencing. So you got Heliolisk, Pissimian, Rotomo itself, the Silvallis that we have around, Talonflame, Serena, Zatu. Um, let's keep going. Egialola, the teleport sets. Now we're in PU, but this is still worth addressing. Since I do feel like there are a couple down here that might be worth it. Uh, Togedemaru is like the only one <laughs> from there. But that's a lot of pivots. And of course, Rotomo is the best of them all. Is Okay, how do you stop a Volt Switch with a ground type? Rotomo is a grass type with Stab Leaf Storm. It's a really unpleasant situation because... Even if you're against Scarf Rotom Mo, that's not always the easiest thing to scout out. Sometimes your opponent will have a team that's constructed in a way to where Rotom Mo set is intentionally ambiguous. And they do that because what your opponent wants to do is force you to constantly play around Rotom like it is not Choice Scarf. Like, every turn you're trying to block its Volt Switch, it can just Leaf Storm you the next turn. And people will do that to force you into the most awkward of lines possible. What those sorts of teams do is they force you to rely on Pokemon like Decidueye, Delmize, um, Egealola, Drampa, I guess I could throw out as well, um, Serena, Vileplume. Those teams try to make you rely on just general blanket checks to Rotom Mo itself. Mons that resist Electric and Grass, and even for some of them, don't mind getting a trick, or can beat Nasty Plot Rotom Mo. They want you to be forced into always going into those kinds of Pokemon, because what that lets your opponent then do is spam Volt Switch with no regard, even if it's not doing a lot of damage. What that lets your opponent do is constantly bring in any of the super duper duper good wall breakers that Inu has. Keep in mind, a big thing that we constantly see with lower tiers is a large difference in the balance between defensive Pokemon that are very good and offensive Pokemon that are very good. There's always more offensive Pokemon, it seems like, because the really good defensive Pokemon naturally are going to be tiered higher. And in general, there's just more random offensive Pokemon, it seems. I can't say that with certainty, but as a player of a lower tier, it certainly feels like <laughs> Nintendo intentionally made it to where more Pokemon are really good offensively. And so the elite of the elite offensive Pokemon rise to the higher tiers, but then you get like... It feels like a 75-25 split between 
the offensive and defensive threats in Inu. And while you still get a centralization around the really good offensive Pokemon, there's still these like niche wall breakers that it feels you have to still sort of keep in mind. Like think about, I've always talked about in the past how there are a lot of wall breakers that could be, that are like really threatening, but end up not being that good because they're kind of slow. And that's probably the quintessential example of just Pokemon that wrote a bow makes work more than they otherwise would because it's so obnoxious trying to pivot around them. Talk about like Grimmsnarl for example. Rotom Moe gets to constantly pivot on Pokemon like Decidueye and Delmize, and Grimmsnarl can come in 25 times more in a game than it otherwise would. Exploud? Oh, Exploud gets to just come in a whole bunch against a Vileplume? Sounds pretty nice for that Pokemon. Machamp? Machamp just gets to come in versus the slower Pokemon? that don't actually KO it? Wow, incredible. <laughs> and it's this sort of dynamic that people believe exists within NU that Rotom Mo is the culprit for, and as a result, should get it banned. It seems like, for a lot of people at least, and I'm part of this crowd generally, because I don't feel like Rotom Mo itself is broken. Some people do, some people think that Rotomo's kit itself is too much. I generally would view it through the lens of the unhealthy argument. If you... I don't know where the thread is, but there's some, like, Smogon tiering policy thread where it's, like, unhealthy, uncompetitive, and then... Um... The, the next word doesn't start with un, but broken. Those are, like, the three lenses you can look at banning something for. And so if you're talking about uncompetitive, that's gonna be things like the smoke on evasion clause it's gonna be like moody being banned as an ability or shadow tag i shadow tag might be banned for being broken but we can leave it to the evasion stuff and moody people feel like what those things do is it takes the skill expression out of the game and just lends the user of those tactics way too much power even if they play poorly and then you look at broken that would be a case of if Zacian Crowned was in NU. What are, what I don't know what this dude's saying, <laughs> but that would be an example of that, where it's just a broken Pokemon. It's too it's too strong. And an unhealthy, that always feels like the most vague, because it could really be meant or it could be interpreted as meaning a lot of things. You could say a Pokemon that's broken is unhealthy because, oh, Every, you're just forced to always build your teams using this Pokemon, or because it's literally you just need to, or else you lose to this Pokemon if you don't use it to check it. That could be an example of unhealthy. It's why this is maybe this is a little off topic, but I'm gonna bring this example up. The Create a Pokemon project. They have never made a Ghost Normal type, and I have been told by other people that that's Typing has always been met with a little hesitancy out of fear that it would result in an unhealthy dynamic of you use the ghost normal to check the ghost normal. So that could be an example of unhealthy. Another example of unhealthy could be like... Oh, it's really hard to come up with these. If you're talking about toxic spikes in Sun and Moon in you... Which is like also in that like centralization category of Toxic Spikes and Sun and Moon in you. They're really good because both of the common setters of Toxic Spikes, Garbodor and Weezing, they're already super great Pokemon. But Toxic Spikes are generally great because there aren't a lot of. There's not good non grounded removal. The only Pokemon that removes hazards commonly in in you that does not get affected by Toxic Spikes is Rotom. You've got a couple other options, like Zatu if you run Defog, that's sometimes seen on stall. Same with Articuno. Um, Defog Golbat is a thing, but pe Defog Golbat's kind of bad, because it otherwise loses to the Hazard Setters pretty consistently, and there are other moves you'd rather run. So Valley Steel, just not a very good Pokemon. And so when you talk about the unhealthiness of Toxic Spikes in that meta, it's linked to that dynamic of there being really limited options that consistently can remove them, and how you almost just have to build with a Grounded Poison type 
all the time, or with a refresh Blastoise, it feels like. Because otherwise, Toxic Spikes just... They're too good. They're too good at remaining up, remaining on the field throughout the game. It's too easy to build a team where you just end up being like, Oh look, I could get T-Spikes up. I think that could be an example of unhealthy. Other SM players probably disagree a little bit, but for the sake of explanation, here it is. And then Rotom Mo, how does it fit into the unhealthy category? Well, in my eyes, Rotom Mo can be viewed as unhealthy. And I'm saying can be viewed because I'm not too sure if I view it as unhealthy. I lean towards it, though. I think Rotom Mo probably should be banned. But Rotom Mo can be un viewed unhealthy because it's so obscenely difficult to play around Volt Switch. Ground types obviously constantly have to play around the threat of Leaf Storm. And because Rotom Mo is not always Choice Scarf, it's not like you can just play the game of, you know, Protect and Scout for the Volt Switch. You know? You don't get to just do that. You don't get to always rely on just being the the better player winning the 50-50s. Rotom Mo might just be, you know, itemless with Defog. It could be a utility set. It could be Nasty Plot and then just Leaf Storm your ground type. We have seen multiple NUPL games where someone blocked a Volt Switch from Rotom Mo, only to stay in with their Mudsdale the next turn and get Leaf Stormed and die. Yeah, really fun time, by the way. <laughs> it's why Soul Valley Ground is so good. You know? It's faster than Rotom Mo if it's not Choice Scarf, so you can block the Volt Switch and then you turn out the next turn and learn, oh wait, this isn't Scarf. While also still just consistently denying the Volt Switch if it is Scarf. But it'd be that kind of dynamic. Rotom Mo being unreasonably hard to deny pivoting from, being unreasonably hard to punish even the pivoting from, that would have people saying unhealthy. People would say it just makes the meta worse. But that's about it with the Rotom Mo suspect. You can, of course, view this thread if you want to get a little bit more insight on what Mary Berry wrote up. You got a lot of talk about how, like, anti ban is, um, a lot about just how I talked earlier about centralization, but in a good way, where Bronzong did so much for the tier defensively. Rotom Mo does that a lot, utility wise, where it's just really good defensively. It's another defogger, it's a, it's a viable choice scarf user, which, frankly, nowadays it feels like most tiers just rely on fast Pokemon for speed as opposed to scarfers as like their dedicated fast option which is interesting and then of course you know trick like it says here you sometimes just get so valley ground and <laughs> have fun you're locked into trick now and it sword stances and sweeps you anyhow i think that's about to be it for me i hope you guys enjoyed this of course Make sure, if you feel strongly about this suspect test, to get voting recs. Uh, where does it say? Okay, July 21st. That is the deadline. So, make sure you get your recs done by then. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace.